Hey, you're catching us on Rough Rider Radio. This is the Gospel Ride with Keith Dobbins. I'm a songwriter, I'm a singer, and a producer. Listen, this show is about the sound of music, and also we're going to touch on community topics that are of interest to everyone. Join us every first Sunday from 3 to 5 and from 8 to 10 on the Gospel Ride. Let's start the show. Get ready to laugh, cry, sing, dance, and most of all, feed your soul on the Gospel Ride. Hey, welcome to the Gospel Ride with Rough Riders Radio. This is Keith Dobbins and the Sound of Sunday Talks. I'm excited today because I got my buddy on the line here. I've got the incomparable, the incomparable Jamel Strong, my brother, my friend, and an amazing artist. And I'm excited for Jamel because he's got a new single that's just hit the hit the airwaves. And I'm telling you what, everybody is singing this song. Everybody on all social media platforms, they are singing this man's song everywhere. And a matter of fact, we've been singing this song for a very long time. Come on, I want to welcome Jamel Strong to this uh, to this show. Jamel, how you been doing? I am blessed. I'm honored to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I tell you, um, I count it an honor. Thank you. Well, man, we are excited to have you here. You've done so much re- remarkable work over the years. Not just, you know, we, the world is hearing uh, your song now, but if we just go, just backtrack a little bit, all the things you've done uh, in your hometown, uh, you're now in Baltimore, Maryland. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But before you got to Baltimore, you were in Huntsville, Alabama, and doing such great work in the community uh, as far as vocal training and developing and, and mentoring so many singers that and, that are in Huntsville. And surprisingly, there's an, an amazing amount of, talent in Huntsville, Alabama. Can we talk about that for just a minute about your hometown and, 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 and how integral you were in, in terms of uh, developing uh, young talent and uh, mentoring them? Let's talk about that for a second. Um, to, to talk about my home is, is easy. It's a joy. I had the pleasure of, um, I was raised there in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I'm a PK, as they call them, a preacher's kid. My father's a pastor and my mother, my father and mother raised me you know, in the things of the Lord, but I just musically, um, there's such a rich heritage for, for the size of the city that it is. It's not a small city, but it's, of course it's not all at the same time, it's not mm-hmm. a metropolis, but the amount of gifts that are there in that, you know, per capita is, uh, is amazing. Of course you have, um, the institutions such as Oakland university that's there. So right. they have, a rich history of singers. But even besides that, the city itself is just filled with singers, you know. So I just had the pleasure of coming up and just watching and learning and Mm -hmm. just kind of gleaning. And then all the time, everything that I got, I always wanted to, to share it, to share it with others, to make others around me to be their best selves. And so, you know, Dr. Manny Moss Clark was like a, uh, a, a mentor and inspiration for me as a child. So growing up, you know, we would go to our conventions. I would watch her. I would glean from her. I would see how she would take command of the um, singers and, you know, and just pull the best out of people. So I kind of just wanted to do that same thing is just pull the best out of people that were around me and, and just admonish them to be serious about their music and about their craft in whatever they're doing for the Lord. And so I, in whatever way I could, I would do that there while I was there. So you kind of took on that mantle. So it wasn't a, uh, it was almost a natural progression from what, where you had been in terms of learning and, and gleaning from Dr. Clark. You kind of took on that for your city. Is, is that, is that a, a kind of fair estimate of, of what you did? That's, yeah, I think that's an extremely fair estimate. I mean, I, I definitely, I was highly impressed with, how she commanded the stage. Yes. It wasn't just, I'm going to Millie Mouse up here. It was like, if you could, if you, when you come up here, come up here like you know what you're doing. <laughs> and I think she demanded that no matter what. And I think, you know, obviously her daughters, the Clark Sixers, are, are an example of her legacy in terms of not just being professional and being excellent, but also being um, tied to their church tied to the principles of the church um, and to the standards of the church, which I see you doing as well. Uh, growing up Church of God in Christ, coming into the music industry where 
there's a whole lot going on and there's a lot of choices that you can make, but you kind of stay true to, not kind of, you stay true to your upbringing, the church of God in Christ. So you brought what you learned in your church into the industry because it's two separate things. It's two separate places. So you brought that from your church uh, and, and you, you poured into your community and now on, on, a, on a local level, and now you are actually doing the same thing on a national level. Uh, I want to know if this song that is that that the single that you have out now. I know you you wrote this song a while back. Was it, it was in Huntsville when you wrote this song? So I, I, mean, I was definitely definitely living there, but I actually was in the city of Roanoke, Virginia. I was doing a workshop there for a bishop for they were having a conference and um you know now that i think about it ironically it was around it was leading up to pentecost so it was around this same time wow it was around the same time that's amazing my hands are lifted up right <laughs> come on talk to me it was around the same time it, it would have pretty much almost been like the same time to the day because it was on a um saturday before pentecost oh my i could run anyway i never wow. thought of <laughs> But talk no, to I, me. Go ahead, go ahead, Jamel. What you say? I was trying. I'm getting excited. I I, I want to talk. I want to let you finish. Okay, I just gonna say I was in Roanoke, Virginia, um, and I never forget this. I was in the hotel room before I, uh, we were preparing to rehearse with um, the singers there in that city, and I was on the side of my bed, and I was just sincerely asking God to give me what it was that he had for his people. I just mm -hmm. did not want to mishandle that time, mishandle that moment. And so I was saying, God, whatever it is that you have for your people, Lord, just give it to me, um, you know, lead me, guide me. And literally after that prayer, um, the melody just came out of my spirit and I started singing, you know, my hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a blessing for you from you. And I've, finished and I wrote the whole song in that space of time and after that uh, Keith I instantly knew I was like there's something about this you know yeah because yeah. I write songs all the time you know I write songs probably almost every day right but they're not for the consumption of the world sometimes they're for my victory right, right? or for my right. building Sing to yourself songs and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what the Lord tells us to do. So a lot of times, there are times when, when and a couple of times I can remember just, just precisely how the Lord gave me the verse, the chorus, uh, and the bridge to a song. And then when he, when he lifted from, and when he was lifting from me after depositing that to me, he said, now this is what I want to hear. This is what I want to hear back to me. Did you kind of get that same sense on the song that you wrote? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because it was, it was, I was in such a tender place to hear him at that time. Mm -hmm. I just really was. I was, I, I had a magnified yes, as <laughs> I like to say. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> and, and go ahead. Where it came from. No, no. Well, I you know, what, what, <laughs> One of the things I get excited about is when God gives you a song like, like your single that's out, it's a song for the ages. It's a song for the future. So those words you wrote were, even though you wrote them 15, 20 years ago, they came from eternity and literally they're going to last through eternity. So they're still relevant now because God spoke then and his voice never changes. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. So those words are, will be the same yesterday, today and forever. So we're, we're being blessed by this music. We're being blessed by this song. And we're going to play a little bit of that song uh, on, the, on the show today. Let's talk about how from, from, from Huntsville to, where, to, to Virginia, now you're in, in, in Baltimore, Maryland. And we got to wrap it up real quick. So just kind of, kind of throw it at us, brother. Sure. I'm, I'm here just on assignment here in Baltimore for, for this time, and it's been it's been a blessing. It was a necessary move. I didn't want to do it. I didn't plan it, but it was God ordained. It was kind of like Abram. He said, "Get thee out." So there, there you go. go. <laughs> Loose the familiar. And hey, a lot hey, of people not there where I was, huh? I said, I, I, said I was agreeing with you. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm saying it's not that where I was 
uh, was bad is that what I needed for, uh, for this time of my life, I had to make a transition. And so God is faithful and I just thank him. I don't know what he has next, when he has next, but whatever it is, my answer will be yes. Uh, where you are, it, it seems like a lot of times God gives us an assignment for a region. And, and when you're faithful over a few things and God makes you ruler over many, a lot of times I think in this season that we're in with COVID and, and the pause that, we, that everyone is on is allowing us to identify who we are and what we're here for. And in this season, uh, you, know, you made the move and I've made moves as well. And now we're starting to make sense that where you came from conditioned you for where you are. And it, 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 it kind of gave you that voice. Uh, and, and and the diligence and the obedience that that it takes to do that on that level, and God is graduating you and expanding you uh, beyond uh, your boundaries that you've had before. And now you are speaking, and this song is speaking to the world. It's it's, it's amazing how it has just caught on fire on social media. Uh, how everyone is singing that song, and it's kind of started, and everybody's kind of joining in because God wants His word. It, when, the, when the scripture says, "And greater works shall you do," then the multiplicity of what He says is multiplied through other people. And what's happening with this music, with your song, God is multiplying it like the stars are in the in the sky. And that's what happens when you follow the leading of God and you follow what He says and be obedient. But obedience takes practice. So you have to, we we have to spend time uh, uh, being groomed in a place of obscurity, if you will. And, and, and again, Huntsville is not a, an obscure place, uh, but uh, on the landscape of what God has for us, sometimes he takes us into the, into the, uh, uh, into the gray areas so that we're not influenced so much by things and possessions so that our love for him can be foundational and, and be solidified. And then once that's true, God trusts you with what he gives you. And that's what I see him doing uh, for you in this season. So we're excited about that. We want, to, want you to tell everyone your social media platforms, whether that's uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Let us know. Let them know where they can find you. Let them know where you are and how they can get your music. Sure. So um, my website is uh, jamelstrong.org. That's J-A-M-E-L strong.org. And you can find me on all social media outlets at the same, at Jamel Strong, J-A-M-E-L Strong. And of course, Facebook is Jamel Strong. And every place I tell people I'm not hidden. I'm easy to find. <laughs> We're so, so thankful, brother. Is there, is there any last words you want to say? I just want to say, you know, uh, even with the song, my answer to it up. It's a song of surrender. It, it is. Um, it's a song of sacrifice. It's a song that solidifies yes. And I'll, no matter what it is that God has called you to do, I want you to be encouraged and know that you're not alone. That He has equipped you, Amen. And that he, and He is not going to let you fail. God will not let you fail. And every resource that, that you need, it is coming to you. It is there, and it will be there when you need it. So trust God and watch him do far beyond what you could ever ask or think. Amen. You heard it. You heard it here. And it, watch God do beyond any thought that you could have. This is the Gospel Ride on Rough Riders Radio with Keith Dobbins on Sound of Sunday Talks. Join us again next time. Thank you, Jamel. Appreciate you being here. Thank you.
And I will not go straight Heard of my steps, God, and I will follow you, I'll follow you. to trust. I feel a bit displaced right now. 